Hi everyone, happy Friday. I just wanted to make a short little video um, just to test and see if my OPK would come out positive. Now, if it does, then there's gonna be a part two to this video because I have another experiment with this OPK. So, with that being said, I got a little excited because I took an OPK last night and it almost looked like it was kind of negative. So I thought, oh my goodness. So, um, and then today I had a temperature spike, but I kind of woke up a few times and I went to bed kind of late. So I'm hoping that it's not an inaccurate temperature because I took it about 30 minutes later and rule of thumb, whenever you're charting and you're using a special basal body temperature, which is your temperature at rest, it's always a good idea to take your temperature at the same time every day. And I actually highly recommend taking your temperature um, long before you would actually wake up, especially if you have kids, because there's a number of distractions. Um, when I started charting again with my last cycle, at the very, very beginning, I realized um, my kids wake up, you know, different times. So that it kind of makes it difficult to have accurate temperatures. And, and I really wasn't sure if, um, most of them were accurate, so I decided this cycle that I was going to set my alarm for about an hour before I knew that they normally would wake up. Now, if by some fluke they wake up, <clears throat> you know, a little earlier, then that's fine. Um, I would still, I would still do the temperature, log it, you know, the second I woke up, and then whatever time it was, and then kind of note the uh, circumstances behind it, just so I would, I would know. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and dip this. This, um, I. This has been held for about four hours and I haven't had any beverages. So it is concentrated and let's see what happens. So we're just going to sit here and wait for a few minutes. So we're right at two and a half minutes. Yesterday I did a uh, video where I was doing an experiment to see if the concentration and the dilution of urine would have an impact on an OPK. And the test results were actually a bit tricky because on the test lines themselves, um, on the one with the diluted urine, it actually kind of looked the same as the control line. But then I realized that sometimes the dyes on the actual tests themselves, you can have a whole pack of internet cheapies or you know uh, whatever brand of uh, OPKs you choose to purchase, say at the drugstore or you know Walmart even, and you know you can have different tests have different amounts of dye in them, which can also affect the test. So that's something to also be cautious of as well. You may get a fainter uh, control line. So typically what you want to do is you want to base your test line off of the control line. Just because you have a lighter test line, that could be the reason, um, it could be a result actually of the control line and how much dye was there. Unless you are using a pregnancy test in which if that's the case with a pregnancy test, say if you're far further along in your pregnancy than you thought when you're actually testing at the time, of course the amount of HCG, if it's extremely high and you're using especially a low sensitivity test, it's going to pull most of that dye. So you might find yourself having a, an extremely dark test line um, versus a control line. I actually read some stuff about that last night because I thought it was kind of interesting. I, I didn't think I didn't put much thought into it. When I was pregnant with my son and my daughter, actually both times, and neither one of the times I was actually trying. I, I did for 10 years. 10 years I actively tried. I took my basal body temperature, I checked my cervical mucus, my cervical fluids, and my cervical position, took OPKs, you know, did did the deed, you know, baby danced and all that good stuff and charted every every little feeling and twinge and all that good stuff. And, you know, for some odd reason, I had unexplained infertility for about 10 years. When I got with my now husband, my now darling husband, um, I was, we were just, you know, it's like I was in college and we were just kind of having fun and we were dating and, you know, I, I have known him for a long, long, long time. You know, we grew up as kids, so it wasn't like, um, cause I was very wary about dating 
And especially after being in a, a long-term relationship, and once that had ended, I decided to take some time for myself and just, you know, kind of do my own thing and kind of, I wanted to do the things that I, I hadn't been able to do before. So I was having fun and we were dating and I wasn't really, I mean, I took a long break from it and of course, you know, sure enough, boom, boom, you know, I got pregnant with my son and wasn't even trying the, uh, but of course I waited. Um, I knew about the time, this is when I was just kind of tracking my, my, um, my period with a normal uh, calendar where I would circle the day and then count up by like, you know, 28 to 30 days and, and circle it and be like, you know, possible period start date and yada, yada. But, um, you know, a few days had passed and I hadn't started. And then I kind of had to sink in with the thought that, oh my gosh, well, what if, what if, what if, what if, you know, let a few more days pass by. So by the time I actually tested, I had way more than enough HCG in my system. And I tested with an EPT, which is a blue type blue dye test, but a C at the time I actually didn't know about the, uh, the dreadful blue dyes, but you know, I took two, they, they both came up positive instantly. I took another frere, which is a first response. I mean, the test line, like as I was peeing on, on the midstream test, it just, the test line came up first immediately and very, very dark control line was very, very light. Same thing with, with my daughter, because of course, you know, my son was actually only eight months old. And what I didn't know is that you are extremely fertile once you've had a child. <laughs> so with that being said, I found out I was pregnant, but again, it was about a week after, maybe even a week and a half after I had uh, missed my period and same thing, I got first response and boom, 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 you know, very, very dark test line. So I kind of thought that was interesting when I read that last night. So let me go ahead and explain how this works. In a nutshell, we have luteinizing hormone that runs through our system. Um, a day or two prior to ovulation, typically, you're going to have a surge in that luteinizing hormone. And most often, more often than not, we usually will have two lines. You want to use uh, urine that you've held for a minimal, say, two to four hours in the afternoon between 2 and 8 p.m. And you want to do it about the same time every day. And sometimes you may want to test twice a day just, just so you don't miss your surge. So I'd recommend maybe around 2 or 3 p.m. And then maybe around 6 or 7 p.m. Because you never know. Um, you have these two lines here. But in order for it to yield a positive result, you want the test line to be equal or darker than the control line. Now, when you get these little internet cheapies sometimes... Um, you're looking at the package thinking, oh, okay, so if I get just two lines, it's positive, and if I only get one, it's negative. That's only for a pregnancy test. So don't, so that's incorrect. You always want to make sure that you have two lines and the, and if you don't have two lines, it's, it's definitely negative. If you do have two lines, the, like I said, the test line is equal to or darker than the control line, and so that's how that works. So let's see, two and a half, three and a half. Okay, so it's been about, it's actually been about six minutes here, and, mm, okay. I'm going to actually, there we go. Okay, I should have done this yesterday. Okay, so, as you can see, okay, so it is positive. All right. So that is, that is very positive. So that can mean one of two things that this was a fluke. Last night's test was a fluke. Maybe my urine was a little too diluted because it looked lighter, although I held it for about three hours, but it did look a bit lighter and I did it very late. So that may have had something to do with it as well. So that's the result. Okay. So now with that being said, I'm going to be doing another experiment now that this is positive. Okay, so it's about 2 o'clock, and I had just peed. And so immediately I had taken this OPK. So I'm going to make another video. It's going to be part two shortly. And my experiment is going to be with these, will the temperature of the urine also affect 
the outcome of an OPK? That's a really good question because that's something else that I thought of yesterday when I did my video. So that's, that's something I want to know. So I'm going to let this sit out for about, I don't know, about two hours and we're going to see what happens. And it's going to be the same exact urine and I'm going to dip another stick and I'm going to make another video and this will be the part two. So this is the part one. As you can see, it's positive. I'm on cycle day, I think, I think I am on cycle day 12. So let's see what happens in about two hours and I'll make another video and I'll upload it. And you'll probably see these a little later tonight because you know it takes kind of a, a while to load these videos. So with that being said, um, if you like this, if you like my videos and you find them informative and entertaining or whatnot, um, do me a favor and give these videos a like. That sure would help me out quite a bit. And subscribe to our channel. The more viewers we have, the better. And that lets me know that you enjoy watching these videos. And guess what? I'm going to like make more. So I really enjoy making them. And I really enjoy blogging about fertility and all that good stuff. So go ahead and give my video a like if, if uh, it helped you in any way. And share them. I mean, that's what we make them for. Um, visit us at www.peeonastickfreak.com. We have a lot of good information there. Um, follow us on Instagram, um, P on a Stick Freak. Same thing with Twitter. It's uh, twitter.com forward slash P on a Stick FRK for Freak or at P on a Stick FRK. And go ahead and like us on Facebook. Add us on, you know, add us on Facebook. It is facebook.com forward slash P on a Stick Freak. Now, for some odd reason, I'm not getting many likes on my Facebook page where I have tons of followers on the Twitter that we've recently created and the Instagram that we've recently created, which is which is fine. But go ahead and give my Facebook a like. I mean, that sure would help me out a bit, too, because, I mean, it's very, very informative. Um, I post lots of information on all three social media forums. So um, if you if, if you enjoy our website um, and our YouTube videos and you and you'd like to see more stuff coming out, um, go ahead and give us a like. Also, if you have any other uh, experiment ideas, email them to us or let us know on Facebook, let us know on Twitter, let us know on Instagram. Um, our email is p-on-a-stick-freak at hotmail.com. So email us your, your ideas, email us your inquiries, your questions, your concerns, and, and your stuff just might appear on our website. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for now, and I will see you back here in about uh, two hours, and your time, it'll probably be several hours later, because I'm going to go ahead and upload this video. Again, this is part one, and we are going to wait for part two. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Bye.